probably could tell when I was shaking inside. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Um, the Lord has brought Bob and Bonnie into really strategic times in the life of this church. Uh, when it was being birthed, when we really made a transition of the DNA, the type of church that we are, I just I just know that uh, Bob has a. I feel there's gonna be a shift this weekend, not only for us but for this area, this yeah. region, yeah. and for yeah. you. Um, me and Stephanie love Bob and Bonnie so much. I'm just so honored and privileged to get to know them, and I just want you to give them a warm, warm welcome, please. Thank you. see how tall you are. <laughs> well, thank you for the warm welcome. It is great to be here. It's a, it's really a strategic time in the body of Christ. And, and I know the Lord, Bob's on dialysis now three days a week, so we can't travel like we used to. But um, it's like the Lord has been sending us where he wants us to be at a certain time. And so this is no mistake that we're here this weekend. And we're really happy to be here. Um, I know Bob has some some things that he wants to share, and I'm just going to share something kind of quickly what the Lord gave me this morning. Um, he said, these are the days of the dry bones Ezekiel prophesied. Wow. And so I began reading Ezekiel 37, and, um, and I know that everybody knows that, but um, there's just some things in here that what I felt the Lord was showing me is, you know, <coughs> God asked him, and he said, Son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel's response was, Lord, you know. But the, the Lord's answer was, of course they could live. Yes. He wanted Ezekiel to prophesy to these dry bones. And there was a purpose for that. Uh, Ezekiel 37, 4 said, And again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. There's been a real famine of the word of the Lord. Yeah. And I think it's because people have not wanted to hear the spirit and the truth. They've heard a lot of ear-tickling words, but they haven't heard the word in spirit and truth. So... Uh, then the Lord said to prophesy to these bones and I will cause the breath and spirit to enter you and you shall live. And I'm not going to read all of this, but you know, as he began to prophesy to those to those bones, they, they came alive. And that's what I felt there's in this time and in this season, yeah. that the true body of believers are going to hear the word in spirit and in truth. Because I believe what the Lord's been showing us over some period of time, there's a lot of words out there. There's a lot of, uh, I'm going to say, false prophecy. Yeah. Fruit. Not true yeah. prophecy. You can always judge the word by the fruit. So I believe that those words you're going to see, those things, the false is going to fall away. And the true fruit is going to come into a fruition, a ripeness. And the body is going to begin to take form because uh, Bob may speak about this also today or tomorrow but the body is coming into that time of Joel's army you know once that body arises in power and its strength and its maturity it's going to it's not going to strive against one another it's going to work together as one body he is the head and we are the body and we're going to work together and walk together we're going to march we're not going to break rank this is the body that's coming together. And verse 14 says, I shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know, understand, I was talking about understanding, awakening, 
and realize that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it. I may speak later about the power of the spoken word. We really need to watch the words that we're saying because we speak life or death, blessings or curses with our words. So we just spoke at Morningstar a couple days ago and I told the kids, it's, it's their, um, the school there, I said that's why God gave us two ears and one mouth. So we would listen, we would listen more and talk less. It's strategic what we say with our words because we can really, um, we can bring life or we can cause death. These creative miracles that are going to come, it's going to be us being in a line with the Father and doing just like Jesus did, His will on earth. And we will speak it forth. And I know Bob's going to share a bunch of things and I'm probably touching on, I'll just be in every once in a while when, when I get the chance. But anyhow, I just wanted to share that with you. So, you know, that's what the Lord spoke to me this morning. These are the days of the dry bones that Ezekiel prophesied. And I believe they're coming into that army. And they're raising up and you're going to see real life come forth. This could very, very well natural and spiritual. Or I don't know how you know it or not, but Israel is mobilizing. They are ready to hit. And we need to be praying for Israel and Jerusalem right now. Also, I feel that the word that Bonnie and I have sh shared a couple of weeks ago is Joel's army is the father has declared war. This can be a natural war that will involve the United States. Mm -hmm. So be praying because this is a critical time. Amen. Amen. Jesus. And uh, the only place that the answer is going to be now is in the church. Yes. Government is not going to have the answer if the church isn't praying. But the church is God's authority. He gave the church all authority. The Father did. And He's waiting for the church to mobilize and begin to take that authority. So, when I came in today, I was tired. I wanted to lay down for a few minutes. And I immediately went in a thing that I call a trance. And I want to tell you what I heard. I heard all kinds of singing going on. And I was singing with it. And here's what I heard. I want to see Jesus. I want to look on his face. I want to see Jesus and I want to see his amazing grace. It's a song like this. And that song is being sang in, in heaven right now. And it should be sang, be sung in your own hearts. Amen. And I was sort of, what are you talking about, Lord? Show them how to see me. Amen. Awesome. It's time you quit hearing about men like me tell you what is going on with me and him. It's time that you have your own relationship with him. Your own intimate relationship. So, Bonnie, if you would turn to uh, 2 Corinthians 6, the last two chapters in that. And let's see what happens here. This is an invitation. Yeah. Okay, this is out of the Amplified, by the way. So come out from among the unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord, and touch not anything unclean. Then I will receive you kindly and treat you with favor. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I think that's an invitation to you here today that you would be sons and daughters of God. And if you're a son and daughter, you can see Him. 
Now, would you go to uh, 7 1? And I'll probably interrupt you. Therefore, therefore, since these great promises are ours, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates and defiles body and spirit. Body and spirit. When you were conceived, a spirit come from the Father in that conception. And that's the human spirit that's here. That is your conscience. And when you were born again, that conscience opened up and began to guide your life. And one thing I was picking up as I walked in here is some of you are getting real close to having your conscience totally cleansed. So, uh, you've been working on it. Now, if you read the rest, I want to say to you what you do if there's something that's defiled your conscience in the past and you haven't repeated, repented of it, then do it. Because the Holy Spirit's not going to clean your spirit. Neither is God the Father or the Son. You're going to do it and they will forgive you when you repent and, and come to that, I'll never do that again. Okay, and bring our consecration to completeness in the reverential fear of the Lord. You have the ability to clean your conscience. You want to see Jesus? You want to look on his face? The religious system has taught you for th probably three centuries that you can't see Jesus. It's strange. They'll always say you can believe every word in Scripture. But to deny the word, to be honest, the pure in spirit can see the Father. And if some of you here, you ought to change your thinking. I'm not going to quit until I see Jesus. Until I look on His face. I want to look on His eyes. I want to see my daddy. The whole purpose of all of this is Ephesians 2 6. I mean, 2 2. In this, it's 2 22, rather. It's the end of that chapter there. And the Father wants to cohabitate with you in the Spirit. Amen. If He wants to cohabitate with you in the Spirit, He wants to move in with you. That's what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. Any of you out there that have still any way that you defile your conscience, your spirit, all you've got to do is repent. And once you do, you're forgiven. You know, the Father's really tired of professional repenters. <laughs> <laughs> It's because if you're a perfected repenter and every time they give the altar call you up here repenting, it's because you never have repented. Wow. So it's time that you get this done and you get on with son and daughtership. You get on with, I can see Jesus. I can look on his face. Timidity has taught you you're unworthy. That is a lie. What do you think he come for? What do you think he was created for? That's right. To worship the Father in spirit and in truth. There's a thing that I've been noticing in the body of Christ with some of the most anointed. They got unforgiveness in them. Not towards other people, towards themselves. They haven't forgiven themselves. They haven't lived up to their great expectations. 
Good. They haven't lived up to mom and daddy's expectations. Good. But many of these people that I've seen are really annoying. They have lived up to their father's expectation of them. But they've always felt they were unworthy. That is a lie. I want to tell you something about Joel's army. I may add, uh, add to it later on. The father has blew the trumpet and declared war. And he's bringing his soldiers together. Yes. Any of you ever in service and once you go into boot camp, you learn to march with one another. One thing you don't do is you don't look back. Because if you look back, you'll stumble and fall, and everybody behind you will fall. You don't look back on your life, you can't change anything good or bad. It's done. But you can sure affect the, the present and the future. So if the enemy's got you looking back, then if you don't turn and look where you're going, you'll stumble. You'll get lost. And you'll also confuse others behind you. Mm -hmm. There's going to be many people following you now. And you need to be content to be what the Father wants you to be. Not all of you could be president or beautiful like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But don't look back. The Apostle Paul in Romans 8 spoke about how nothing could separate him from God. He left out one thing, his past. One of, in Timothy, he speaks concerning his past. He said, I have finally overcome my past. So I don't care what you've done. All your sins together wouldn't be as much as the Apostle Paul's sins were. And you need to get that done, out of the way, so that you can begin to see your daddy. For he's going to move in. He's going to, what he's doing now is looking for people that will be that army. Joel's army will be harvesters. You're getting ready for one of the greatest awakenings of, of all time. Yes. Next 10 years will be beyond imagination. Yes. And you'll be no part of it if you look it back. Amen. But if you're looking to Him and the future, you've got a glorious future awaiting you. Amen. And so we'll, sometime this year, the, the first harvest will begin. Hmm. And It'll only to be the harvest harvesters. The harvest that's getting ready to happen will only happen in the portion that the harvesters are ready to gather in. And the greater the harvesters, the greater the harvest. And I don't believe it will end in my time, nor some of yours either. For I was told that I would see a billion souls coming to the Lord in my last days. And I would see the return of glory. So I believe both of these things are ready to happen. Yes. Glory to God. But they will only happen if you have a relationship with Him. Mm -hmm. And I think too much of the body of Christ is think that they've got to have a relationship with some great anointed person. <laughs> well, the most anointed person I know of to have a relationship with is the Lord. Yes. 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 And I think that's who you begin to focus on. <laughs> now, in your imagination, you can see God. You can see the Father and the Son. Many of you see them in different ways. I see them as light. And I see forms in light. 
That's according to Ephesians 5. But many of you will need to see them in the way that you see them. And you need to get acquainted with them there. For you were created to have relationship with God. You are the children of God. That makes you gods. You have the right to come into His presence any time that your conscience is clean. I feel that several of you here have got a calling to, I think some of you are already, I think there's, uh, there's pastors and things like that here. But some of the others, in this next 10 years, I think you ought to get a vision of full-time ministry. And also get a vision of your children and your grandchildren and your grand, great-grandchildren in full-time ministry. Yes. For the righteous will inherit the earth. Yes. And the children of the righteous will inherit the earth. Yes. So, I think the church is going to be here a long time, a lot longer than what many people think. Well, it's time the church comes. It will be one church. And the anointed one will be in that church. And he will direct that church. So I also believe that the anointing one is setting up his government in the church now. Amen. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. And as some of you here today. So it's time that we, in our imagination, begin to sing as I was singing. And I didn't see who was singing with me, but they were a huge band. <laughs> and I've seen this before. And it's like they come out of the ceiling. I want to see Jesus. I want to look on His face. I want to see Jesus. I want to see His amazing grace. Yes. This is what I believe you're getting ready for. Mm -hmm. The abiding anointing. Yes. His amazing grace. And uh, for many years, I've been used in many different types of miracles, signs, and wonders. I saw the dead raised a few times, but not that many. I've seen cancers healed. I've seen AIDS healed. I've seen everything except uh, body parts come on the outside. I've seen body parts come on the inside, but never on the outside. We're getting ready for that. Amen. So recently, he began to tell me some things that some of it I understood. But some of it I haven't. And I'm going to share that with you because I think some of you are here that you'll be in a, your churches to bar. And you may need to hear what I'm saying. So, the first step is an undefiled spirit, which is your conscience. This is why you stand before God, you have no excuse. For they come in at conception. A piece of God the Father come in at conception. And when you go home, it'll go home with you. You go back to the Father in Ecclesiastics. So when you were born again, that seed broke open and began to mature in you. So we all got saved by the Logos Word of God when we saw that we needed a Savior. And when you started obeying what it said to obey, and you quit doing the things you had been doing you knew were sin, you know you already knew they were sin when you were doing them. But when you turned away from them, and you began to obey, obedience works righteousness in you. 
and righteousness after it's had its work in you in right relationship with the Father. Works sanctification in you. You know where it does? In your imagination. So, when your conscience is clean, and one of the first things he did for me is I'd been trained to uh, to hate certain nationalities from a child. I was a southerner in Arkansas. And when I got saved, all of a sudden he'd give me a love for those which I'd been trained to hate. One of them was Jews. So I began to love them. Amen. Once your conscience is clean, and purified, you begin to love even the unlovable. Yes. Who are you going to go to to try to lead to the Lord? <laughs> There's no need to go to anybody if you don't love them. That's right. Yes. So you begin to love the unlovable. Wow. And you really rejoice at one of them turning from his sin. Well, in the future, where there's been one, there'll be thousands in one day turned from their sin. Amen. For one billion souls, there's a lot of souls. A person shared with me the other day how many billion, uh, uh, how many billion souls there is in a billion. If you take all the minutes all the seconds, wouldn't it? How long do you think it would take for the seconds to come to a billion? 32 years. This is what you're going to live to see. A harvest that large. I came back from death in 75 because he asked me to come back. And he told me he's going to bring over a billion souls to himself and most of it's going to be used worldwide. So what he's getting ready to start is a lot bigger than the church has even got any ideal. So you're going to see the army raise up and begin to take even nations you'd wiped off, you would have had destroyed long ago. You see them come to the Lord. Mm -hmm. One billion. Also, the return in glory. The return in glory will be the abiding glory that will never again leave the church. Mm. So, what he's dealing with you right now is that you love the unlovable. Yes. I don't care what they've done. Buddy of Christ, we all have done just as bad in the past. Amen. Yes. And when we have a love for them, there's going to be a time they may laugh at you, but there's going to be a time that they're going to need you. And that love in you, that unforgiveness, that love in you, that forgiveness, that abiding love, will give you the words you need for them. For, you know what works out of love? Something comes out of love. It's called faith. And you speak faith into them, you will lead them right to the Lord. For, see, faith worketh by love. Now this faith is working by love. I've known that what's in the Father's heart that you can hear by faith. It's called revelation. Every one of you can get revelation for yourself. And when you're praying for somebody else, you wait on it, you can hear what's in the Father's heart. If you've got a genuine love for that person, it'll have the faith in it 
to bring that revelation right to you by the Holy Spirit that's in you will it be imparted to your spirit and you'll know what the revelation word is and so for many years I've moved by revelation and the word of knowledge for healing of all type but it was never consistent there's been times where every person that I prayed for in the meetings got healed. And other times where nobody got healed for six months. Why? I don't think he wanted one man doing it all. His mind, I believe, is on corporate, family. All of you, all of you hear what's in the Father's heart and you speak it to others. If you've got love, then love is going to bring that faith out to hear what the Father wants done. And then you bring that word of knowledge. Many times I've seen people get instant healed. Sometimes I've seen them get healed over a length of time. Other times I've seen them not even get healed with the word of knowledge. And I had never knew what it was. But I think he's telling me there's higher thinking now. So recently he began to tell me, I'm going to have corporate healings. There's not going to be any stop gap on them. And there's one thing you missed, hope. Yes. For you see, hope is creative. Hope is a faith believing in something that doesn't exist. Is created out of nothing. That's what the Father created this world out of, with nothing. He created it out of his imagination and his hope. He created man and called him very good on the sixth day. He created him out of the, the DNA in the earth that he'd already created out of nothing. So these, we're in a time that this hope mixed with all this other begins to be creative. Becomes a substance that will have a body parts in it. Well, even, I, I'm not into patterns and formers. I don't believe this is a pattern of formula I'm sharing with you. But a condition. These are conditions that I think you're going to have to meet mm -hmm. to move this way. And I think that many of you are already here. You've already met this condition. Well, the clean spirit, love, faith, revelation, mixed with hope, go into your imagination. And when it goes into the imagination, if you're still selfish, that's what you'll get. You'll die wealthy. And where you're going then, you won't like it. But if you don't clean up your imagination, sanctified by obedience and righteousness, then when it comes into your imagination, it creates. And see, the religious people, they only want teaching out of the mind of how they understand the gospel. And sometimes they are wrong. Like God don't heal anymore. That's right. And other stuff like that. But when the mind is the authority, all the rest of it is subdued and never comes into play. But when the mind becomes a servant to the spiritual realm, for father, the Father is the Spirit. And those that are going to worship Him are going to have to worship Him, the Spirit and the truth. And I think this is the main thing He wants now, some people that will acknowledge Him as their Daddy and will relate to Him in the Spirit. Well then, after all this takes place, and it's down here waiting, 
The mind has still been given the authority over the earth. It can be a land mind that kills. It can be a gold mind that gives life forevermore. And so the mind up to now has been after degrees that you can hang on the wall and in your pride show everybody that you went through that. Well, it's time that you quit going and getting your degrees. You've already got the Word of God in you. It's time now you use the mind to make decrees. You decree a matter and it will happen. So you use the mind according to the authority that God's given you. And you speak these things into being. And they are created now. And before you never heard of them, never knew. Everything that's getting ready to take place in the spiritual realm will be called into being by the spirit of prophecy, Isaiah uh, 48, 6, and 7. So let the spirit of prophecy that rests in every one of you begin to come out of you. So I think you've focused on too many personalities and not enough on him. He's the real personality. And if you're a son and daughter of his, then you've got in you what's in everybody else. And I believe what he wants is all of you bringing it out. And if this harvest is getting ready to happen, you're too few. Every one of you, if you had a hundred, you're still too few. If every one of you had a thousand, you're still too few. 32 years. A billion seconds. 32 years. Well, there's going to be a release of the anointing to bring in harvesters. And some of these harvesters are out there in sin now. And when you've got a love for them, you're going to bring them out of there and begin to bring that harvest in. Now, in the imagination, I forget who shared with us, buddy, about Einstein. Who? Einstein made a statement and said, the imagination is greater than knowledge. The imagination in every one of you is greater than the greatest knowledge in this world. The greatest knowledge in this world can't create anything without imagination. Then Einstein also said something else. Without imagination, there'll be no future. I think the Father is waiting for the church to wake up to their glorious future. The man I saw headed your way was called understanding. If there's a people of no understanding, then the Father will have no mercy on them. But a people with understanding The Father will have mercy on them. For with understanding, I don't think there's anything you can't accomplish. But it's got to go through the imagination. It's got to go through this process of working in you. And as I said, I don't call this patterns of farmers. I call this maturity. I think some of you become mature enough For there's been prayer for over 2,000 years for the sons and daughters of God to raise up. And I think we're getting ready for that. We need for them to come forward and be the government over the church. 
We've let the newspapers and everybody else run the church business. They have no business at all butting into that. And they have no anointing to do it. All they know how to do is kill. But God knows how to give mercy. I just keep thinking about the Apostle Paul. All the things that he did. How God turned that around and used him mightily to give us the New Testament, most of it. Don't look back. Because if you do, you'll call all of those that's following you to stumble. Look to today and tomorrow. Don't look and feel that you're a failure because you didn't match up to what your expectations was. My expectation was never to be doing the things that I've done in the last 40 years. I had greater expectations, I thought, than that. And if my expectations had worked, I'd have died a millionaire 40 years ago and been in hell. So I'm sure glad that my expectation didn't come to pass. <laughs> well, I think it's time that you need to get a hold of that your father's expectation is what's going to come forth in your life. And that's enough. <coughs> For the United States is in a bad shape. It's going to take the church to bring it out. Yes. Uh, politically, on January the 16th, which was a round table of the prophets or the blooming of the almond tree, first bloomer of all the trees in Israel. And always on that date he gives me words. And one of the first things he asked me on January the 16th this year was, what do you think about a Mormon president? Mm -hmm. Now that wasn't who I was rooting for. But it is now. <laughs> he said change in everything. Politics, economy, nation, world, everything is changing. Everything is changing with you. Another thing that I would just share with you was, I've got news for some of you. The old man has died. And the new man has been birthed. So we're in the process of burying the old and allowing the new man to come forth. A new time. A new season. Uh, as I said, I think there's ministers here that are uh, full-time ministers, pastors. I would like to lay hands on you because you may not be able to be here tomorrow. You'll be in your own churches. If you're going to be here tomorrow, then I'll pray for you tomorrow. For some of you that are full-time ministers, I'd like to lay hands on you and get you to where your imagination sees Christ, to where you can reveal Christ to your congregation. You can. I was taught you couldn't be holy. But the Lord says in Leviticus 19.2, Be thou holy because I am holy. 
Well, I think we are wakening up to the new man is a man that is morally right. He's in righteous relationship with God. He's been obedient back our ways. And has sanctified his imagination and purified his mind to where it becomes like a gold mine that can bring the glory of God right out of it. So all of you that... Uh, uh, in full-time ministry and you won't be able to be here uh, tomorrow but would you come forth and let me get over here and lay hands on you now what we want is the head good just take a deep breath there you go good Good. 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 And one of the things that your church is going to be good is loosing evangelism. Mm. Good. There you go. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next. Now see what I'm doing. I'm laying hands on these gold mines. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 There you go. Good. 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 The word. Good. The word and counsel. Good. So, a counselor and a powerful one to one evangelist. Amen. Okay. One that proclaims the word. Look me in the eyes. One that is strong in revelation. <coughs> you understand? Yes. Prophecy. The main call it is prophecy. Revelation. Teaching and revelation is far teaching. <coughs> Does he understand? Yes. But your main calling is a prophet. Hard prayer, high level prayer. Hard prayer. Good. Prayer word. Again, this revelation gift is really flowing with you too. Good. <laughs> Good.
what I see with you is eyes. Eyes that can see and discern what's going on. In Jesus' name, and I know I love you. Amen. I see uh, this inspired teaching in, in you, but also I see an ability that's coming into you of work, working miracles to set people free from all kind of mental problems. So there has to be a lot of mental stuff going on around you. <laughs> And the enemy, I think, has been trying to break you down. Don't let him. But your, your ministry's been under an attack. I think you know that, don't you? But that's the enemy. So you take a strong stand, and you don't back up. Okay? Amen. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to share? Okay. Yeah. I um, just want to share a couple things about imagination. In Genesis 1, 26, that we were made in the image of God. So I think it was in his imagination that he saw us. Mm -hmm. And some he had a greater imagination. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. But we were made in his image. It says in the image of God, he created mankind. In Genesis 11, um, I'm just going to read this, verse 4 about the Tower of Babel. And they said, Come, let us build us a city and a tower whose top reaches into the sky and let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered over the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see this city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people and they have all one language. See, they had come together in one accord and one mind. And this is only the beginning of what they will do, and now nothing that they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. And then, of course, God destroyed the tower and scattered the people. But they had come together in, um, in their imagination. They were all one mind. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing that they imagined that they could do would be restrained from them. But it was the wrong kind of imagination. It was not sanctified. And that's what Bob is talking about. If we sanctify our imagination, those things that we, when we pray for someone, and we see, we, we can see into that, you know, with God, what as on earth as it is in heaven, we see the need of the other person. And we can see it in our imagination, that sanctified imagination. We see that they need a new heart or they need a new lung or a new kidney or whatever it is and then we this is like our spiritual womb here our imagination it's our place of hope it's our imagination that's our womb we conceive it there yes. and once it's conceived then the birthing takes place as we speak the power of that word we release it and it and it is done okay we have a friend in um, in the Atlanta area, he never lays hands on anybody, and he has a powerful uh, ministry that he, he speaks the word, and there's healings just take place, miracles, yeah, just continuously, and that's what I see. It's like it's conceived here in our imagination. Just think when the angel Gabriel came to Mary, he didn't lay hands on her, but she received here. She had a spiritual conception, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. Okay? And that's what happens with us. It's the same concept we conceive here in that 
um, what do you call it? sanctified imagination. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to share. Your imagination is like an organ that God has given you to see into an un unseen realm. It's as important to your spiritual life as your heart is for life. And the world has been trying to say, it's only your imagination. And uh, I want to tell you, it's much more than that. Um, it's kind of like a piece of glass, a window. And when we allow unholy stuff, when we allow images and things that we put our eyes upon, it's like mud gets thrown up against that window, that glass. And then the Lord's trying to show us that unseen realm. He's trying to bring the kingdom to us. We can't see because of all the mess. And we don't see like we should. For the church to really walk in the fullness, we need to understand the importance of this organ called imagination that God created within us. When we sanctify it, the imagination is not good or bad. It's neutral. It's an organ, like the heart. We sanctify it, it becomes good. If you see it, you can have it. Prophets prophesy from their imagination. Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father do. He saw the healing in his imagination before he laid hands upon the person. When you start to place an importance upon your imagination and how critically important your imagination is for your spiritual life, you'll begin to exercise it. The gifts of God are improved when we exercise them. I encourage you to daydream God's dreams. I used to sit in my office and I could imagine myself on these crusade fields. And I would just close my eyes and I'd imagine myself on a platform raising my hands and the sick being healed. I would imagine myself giving altar calls and people rushing the altar. Now there was a part of me that would rise up and say, "That's you shouldn't do that, that's vanity. That's pride, you're puffing yourself up. But I felt it was coming from within. That stuff got birthed. But it started as a seed within my mind. If you see it, you can have it. Yes. If you see it, you can have it. I encourage you, and we just want to. Re I just want to release to you, sanctify fantasies. Yes. Sanctify daydreams. Yes. To dream God's destiny over your life. To dream your call and purpose. And just allow it to play through your mind as a fantasy, as a daydream. And from that, the reality of it will be birthed. So, Father, just thank you, Lord, that you are releasing our mind. We, we release our minds to you. We cleanse our imaginations of anything that we have to file it with. We ask for your forgiveness. And we say, Lord, write upon the screen of our mind whatever you want to write upon it. And Lord, we will take, we will set aside, take the time, and daydream your dreams. Mm. We'll dream your dreams, God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No, I think that's where we're going to go today. Okay. We're going to have the prayer team 
and the leadership team from the church. I just want you all to come up, please. And uh, we just want to invite you all to prayer. If you need prayer, these guys will be up here. Uh, Bob's going to be back tonight at 7 o'clock. But uh, why don't you all come up and we'll put some music on. John, you all can come up too. And I just, uh, we just invite you all up just to receive prayer and a prophetic word. Amen.